G'day guys, uh, James Simcock here from South Paws and Vet Dojo. Uh, just wanting to make a short video for you for um, what are now our, our members on our Vet Dojo YouTube channel. Um, these videos are a new initiative um, from Charles and I and really aimed at just trying to give you a bit of an insight into um, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis and, and try and give you some um, tips and tricks and things that you can take home and implement in your practice and, and just give you a bit of a um, deeper understanding of kind of what we do and, and, and see how we do it. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is a little bit about calibration markers uh, for x-rays and um, how we use those, why they're important, specifically looking at, um, in this case, a um, total hip replacement template. And also um, just a couple of tips and tricks on getting some nice straight uh, pelvic x-rays. So I'm going to flip around. Oops. We're going to look at um, my laptop here. So um, I just will start here. We'll go through into um, a presentation. And just before I jump into here, just chat a little bit to you about um, taking straight pelvic radiographs. And what I wanted to show you um, was really the optimal kind of position that we're looking for. So in this shot here, um, the things that are really critical on the VD view that we're looking for most important um, is to make sure they're straight. I look at the iliac wings here, and I want to see that the distance between um, this uh, sclerotic line here, which is the um, the um, top of the iliac wing, um, so the, the ventral aspect of the iliac wing, and I'm looking at that distance between here and the dorsal aspect of that iliac wing, and I want that to be the same on this right side and also on the left side. And so that's one of the um, really simplest ways to assess whether there's any rotation in the X-ray. The other thing that we can look at is the obturator foramen uh, down here. So we want that foramen to be um, uniform and symmetrical on both sides. Um, when specifically I'm taking um, the hip templating x-rays, I don't actually mind if it's an extended hip VD shot like this one or if the, the legs are frog leg. Um, the standard view for most of these uh, ventrodorsal x-rays is to have the hip extended and that's what we've achieved here. When we do that, ideally we want to try and get the um, patellas um, super or in, this, in the center of the trochlea and we want to get the fabellae um, bisected by the cortex of the, the femur on the medial lateral side just to make sure everything's lined up and nice and straight. Um, that's a difficult thing to do um, in terms of getting that um, femur in a nice straight um, position especially in dogs with um, significant hip pain or um, degenerative changes around the hip and so one of the things that I do which is a bit of a trick um, to help um, with getting that femur positioned is to actually change the positioning um, and take what we call a caudal to cranial view of the femur. So in this um, x-ray, uh, sorry, photograph here, what I'm trying to demonstrate is just that when we have the dog on its back, there's a lot of hip pathology in the joint down here. It's hard to actually extend this femur adequately to get it perpendicular to the x-ray beam, which is coming down from the top here. So to get around that and get a nice straight view of the femur, what we can do is actually pull the femur um, cranially and so the, the femur is lying along the side of the dog so this is the tail here um, is on his back and, and this is the head going up this way we've pulled the femur cranially and the femur is now represented by this red line which is perpendicular to the line of the x-ray so when we look at this view it's going to be nice and straight the second thing I'll point out here that's very important is that that femur is elevated quite a long way maybe 10 12 centimeters off the x-ray plate so when I'm templating for a hip replacement, I need the calibration of the x-ray to be very precise. And so I've taken my calibration markers and I've elevated them um, to be at an equivalent distance um, from the plate as the, the area of interest, which is in this case is the femur. Okay, and so that's a really neat way to get it, first of all, a nice straight um, quarter cranial view of the femur. And what that looks like when we actually flip over into our planning software is an x-ray that looks like this. So you can see here it's an, a nice straight x-ray. We've got um, the fabella bisected by the lateral and medial cortex of the bone. We've got the patella sitting in the middle of the trochlea. And we can see the lesser trochanter here. We can see the, um, the really nice morphology of the femur. Um, the planning software I'm using here, incidentally, is called VPOP Pro. It's a really great planning software. I use it um, basically every day for, for all kinds of things. Um, and when we're setting this up, we want to calibrate the image first of all. So, here we are calibrating the image. We have to um, put our calibration markers on the um, image, um, on the calibration image. So we've got um, two balls in this image. There's different types of calibration markers. This is the one that I like to use. These balls are exactly 10 centimetres apart. So from the bottom of the ball to the bottom of this ball is exactly 10 centimetres. So 
we choose our calibration, we hit calibrate, and then all of a sudden the image is calibrated. So then I can come and select um, my total hip replacement implant and I can change the sizing and, and things like that here as we need to. So if I come back to the implants, um, if I click on that one there, um, for instance, we can get rid of this one. I can click on this one and we can change the sizing as we need to. Um, we can change that around and, and we can and select the one that we want to go through. Not going to go through all the detail of exactly what we need to do for hip replacement and the templating here. Really just wanted to show you the importance of the calibration markers. And you can appreciate if that um, calibration marker was at a different distance from the x-ray plate as the um, area of interest, in this case the femur, then um, we're going to get an um, inaccuracy in the size of the implants that we're going to use. So a couple of things to take away from this. Um, first one is the calibration markers, why they're important in terms of the um, area of interest that we're looking at. And the second thing is, um, you know, taking a nice straight VD x-ray, what we're looking for. Um, and if we want to take a really nice straight shot of a femur, um, like we've got in this shot here, um, remember that little trick that we've got um, to pull the femur cranially um, and take what's called a quarter cranial view, rather than in this situation here, where we're having a hard time extending the hip and we can't get that femur parallel to the plate or perpendicular to the x-ray beam. Okay guys, well, thank you for your time. Um, I hope you enjoy the membership. We're gonna put a lot of content up there. If you have any comments or questions or feedback or anything you wanna see, just let us know. Um, have a great day.